Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the virtual college fair for all Virginia students, sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions, so be sure to check out the full schedule and sign up for additional sessions at strivescan.com slash Virginia. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. And with that, here is our schedule for this afternoon. We are here in session B3, so I will turn it over to our first presenter, Ohio University. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much um, for coming today. I know I speak for all, uh, myself and all the panelists when I say we really appreciate your presence. Um, my name is Julie Money. Um, I am the Regional Recruitment Manager uh, for Ohio University. I'm actually located in Columbia, Maryland. And um, of course, I represent all of Virginia. Athens, Ohio is where Ohio University is located. And as you can see, it is a very, very beautiful campus. Um, we are uh, in a rural location. And just in the southeast portion of the state, as you can see on my map there, when you think of Athens, Ohio and Ohio University, think small town. Um, we have a very small town college town, um, but our college is uh, just about 16,000 undergrads and 23,000 students total. Um, so if you actually walk out from the entrance behind me, that is my background, um, you would walk on to Court Street. And I like to talk about Court Street um, because it kind of sets the scene for the whole university. Um, this is our kind of main drag of campus and it has local mom and pop shops, boutiques, small businesses, places where you can get apparel, and of course the essentials, Starbucks, Chipotle, there's a Jimmy John's, Wendy's, CVS, etc. All of this is steps away from campus. So it really blurs the lines between where campus is and where the town is. They really are one. And that's one of my favorite things about Ohio University. So <clears throat> we have 250 majors. When you say 16,000 students, that sounds really overwhelming or it can. Um, but when you think about 250 majors, that really makes the whole experience a lot more personal, a lot more small. We have colleges of engineering, education, fine arts, arts and sciences, business, um, et cetera. So we have a ton to choose from, a little bit of everything. Um, and with an average class size of 30 to 32 students, you really do get that more personalized environment. Um, we have a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which again means you get more time with the professors. Um, and as you can see, on my screen, 90% of our courses are taught by faculty and university administrators, meaning not graduate students. Again, you're getting more time with professors, um, which usually means you have more access to research. We are a research institution, um, so you can start research as early as your freshman year, and we have um, research in every single area of study within our college. But college is a lot more than academics. We have over 600 clubs and organizations. It is so easy to get involved. You can sneeze and actually end up in you know three clubs. We have sports, we have Greek life, we have um, service organizations, and then we have things that are dedicated to just for fun, of course. Um, and then we have a lot of uh, clubs and organizations dedicated to students' field of study, such as a pre-med club. Um, we are Division One. Um, we have 16 Division One sports, uh, but of course we have a, we have club sports and intramural sports, and you get free admission to every single home game. In addition to that, we have free events that happen all the time, hundreds uh, per semester. We have um, student productions, we have concerts, and we have a lot of really fantastic, fantastically talented students on our campus. Um, speakers that come, again, all for free. You shouldn't have to pay to get involved in college. 93% of our students are employed or pursuing further education within one year of graduation. 
we're really proud of this and we think that that speaks to the type of student that attends Ohio University, but also is a testament to our wonderful career and leadership development office. You have access to this office for from day one through the rest of your life. Um, we have a saying here at Ohio, once a bobcat, always a bobcat. Our application process is pretty easy and straightforward. We are on the common application. We will need your transcript. Um, if you are interested in either of our honors programs, we will need an additional supplemental essay. Um, and then we are test optional uh, as well, an optional essay, resume, letters of recommendation. All 250 majors are test optional. Application timeline, I'm gonna stress November 15th, that is our early action deadline, and that is our deadline that is tied to all of our scholarships. There's no additional application, you just apply early action and you uh, have access to almost every single scholarship we offer. And then our rolling deadline is February 1st. Just like to be transparent about our tuition and fees for an out-of-state student, um, just about $33,000 and that is frozen for all four years your tuition fees room and board are frozen for all four years we call that the ohio guaranteed plus and if you have any other questions i recommend you reach out to me via email moni at ohio.edu thank you all very much All right, thank you. And next we'll hear from West Virginia University. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Mandy Weaver. I'm the regional recruiter at WVU for Virginia. And um, I'm just going to start off by giving you a little bit of background about WVU. We are the flagship institution for our state, a land grant university founded in 1867, and we're in Morgantown, West Virginia. We have just under 27,000 total students that attend the university, and they come from every state in the United States and the district and about 118 different countries. We're about half and half in our in state and out of state population. And um, even though we are a bigger institution, we do have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So we do offer some smaller classes for you um, to take advantage of. Our freshman class profile from last fall, these are our averages um, of the students who entered for, for freshmen. So you can see they they, they did pretty well. And um, it just it fluctuates a little bit year to year, but we tend to hover around, um, around these averages, maybe a point or two, um, you know, difference. We do have also, also have, excuse me, a lot of student clubs and organizations at the university, over 480, and everything from sports and recreational type clubs and orgs to Greek life to special interests to community service, um, and then to those clubs and orgs that are organized specifically around your major, your academic department. We're Division One in athletics. We have 18 D1 sports, and we're in the Big 12. And then we also have a lot of clubs and intramurals, the club sports, um, there are a handful that are very competitive and even compete against other uh, D2 or D3 schools as well. We have an honors college and if that's something that interests you, you um, would receive an invitation to join if you meet the eligibility criteria. So there's no separate application or form you have to submit with that. With the invitation there will be instructions on your next steps as providing an essay and um, letters of recommendation, anything additional that the honors college would need to see. We do offer study abroad once that uh, gets to be um, a thing again. Uh, we work with over 50 different countries and we offer trips from as long as a few weeks to um, an entire academic year. And there are faculty led programs as well, um, or you could be going by yourself. It just depends on how you wanna organize that into your program and you'll work with our Office of Global Affairs and your academic advisor to do that. Freshmen are required to live on campus for the first year and we do have lots of options for you to choose from 12 different residence halls that include uh, suite styles and apartment complex we have your traditional community style bathroom set up and then we do have a residence hall that offers um, a pod style for the bathrooms. We're a research level one institution one of only 130 institutions in the country with this classification and we're also a space grant research university so if if that is something that interests you you'll be able to 
to do that at the undergraduate level, uh, work with your faculty members on what they're working on. Free tutoring for all of our students, many learning centers across campus and within your residence halls where you can find help if you need it. A career services center for all of our students and alumni, and also within the academic departments, we have our own career counselors and uh, career centers individually within the different um, academic homes. The Mountaineer Parents Club is something that uh, keeps your families connected to the university. All right, get going here. Um, we're in Morgantown, where we're located. We're in the northern part of our state, about 70 miles south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and about four hours from DC. Morgantown is sort of a medium-sized um, area. We've been called a small city before, and um, I think that's pretty accurate. It is a college town setting, though. Uh, we do have lots of other companies and organizations in Morgantown and in the surrounding area, but the heart of the community is WVU. So it is very student-centered and student-friendly for that. Um, aspect. And those are some of the, the recognitions that we've gotten over the past few years for our community. So our campus is uh, broken out into three different areas. So it is a big campus and it is spread out a little bit, but it is very easy for our students to get around. They can use our transit system, the PRT. Um, there are five stations across campus that students can access to get where they need to go. Our WVU bus system is always out in full force. And then we have our public transportation, which is free to students. And depending on where you're going to be um, academically with your program, uh, you may find that you're spending most of your time on the downtown area, um, especially as a freshman that first semester you would, but then you may branch out into Evansdale for other degree programs. And then if you're interested in health sciences, of course, you'd be on our health sciences campus, which with the WVU hospital system directly across from that. So we do have 14 colleges and schools with 360 total degree programs with our graduate and professional level areas. About 140 of those are undergraduate majors and we also offer 142 minors to help complement uh, your major. So everything from agriculture to interior design is offered at WVU. So we have a rolling admissions process. You'll get a decision in about four to six weeks. We don't require essays or letters of recommendation. You can use our application or the common application. And we are also test optional for the spring, summer, and fall of 2021 terms. Two different sets of scholarships. If you're a score sender, we have some levels. If you're a test optional applicant, there's a different set for you. 87% of our students do receive some form of financial aid and scholarships. And the scholarships are merit-based. Um, but there's nothing additional that you have to do to be um, considered for them. And it's an automatic award. If you meet the criteria, you will um, receive it. And um, our tuition, average costs for tuition fees room and board for the year is a little over 37,000 total before any scholarships or financial aids factored in. If you want to check us out a little bit further, because um, we don't have a whole lot of time to talk with you today about our institutions, but you can definitely go to our future student resources, um, the website here, and check out information about virtual tours, appointments with uh, me or anyone from the academic departments, and check out any of the upcoming special events that we have available for you. And this is my contact information, and you can just find me on the website if you don't feel like writing that down or, or taking a picture of it. Thank you so much for being here here and enjoy the rest of your day. Great, thank you. And next we'll hear from Moravian College. All right, uh, thank you everyone for joining me today. My name is Tim Waite, uh, Assistant Director of Admission at Moravian College. Uh, we are a small liberal arts college located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, so our, our big headline, we always like to mention that we were founded in 1742, which makes us the sixth oldest college in the country. And we actually began educating women at that time. So that does make us the first school in the country to educate women. Uh, and while those stats are uh, interesting enough on their own, the, the thing I really like to get across when I talk about that is that just goes to show that we've been doing this for a long time and, and people have seen a value and a need for a Moravian education for nearly 280 years. So uh, clearly we're doing something right. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we were located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is in the far eastern 
uh, portion of the state. Uh, we are an hour north of Philly and an hour and a half from New York City, which is uh, great for both uh, personal pleasure type trips as well as uh, business opportunities. We do have large alumni bases in both of those uh, regions. Uh, and we also do have two campuses uh, located uh, both in Bethlehem. Uh, they're less than a mile apart, uh, separated by Main Street. Uh, the, the, the walk between them is called the Moravian Mile. Uh, so our campus does uh, blend the history with uh, modern times. Uh, the picture in the, the upper center, uh, that gray stone building, uh, that's one of our uh, dorms on South Campus. That was actually used as a hospital during the Revolutionary War. Uh, but then the picture to the, just to the right of it in the top right corner, uh, that is our state-of-the-art health sciences building uh, that was completed in 2018. Uh, and that includes all sorts of, uh, you know, cutting, uh, cutting edge state of the art, uh, 3D cadaver labs uh, and other simulation labs and, and things that are way above my head, but I know that all of our students in the health sciences programs are, are very excited to have those. Uh, just some quick uh, statistics about Moravian. Uh, we are just under 2000 students. Uh, and we offer uh, 55 uh, academic majors and programs. Uh, some of the more popular ones, uh, the, the health sciences, I mentioned that brand new building, uh, that uh, houses probably our most popular major, which includes a number of different programs, uh, such as nursing, uh, pre-physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy, pre-athletic training. Uh, another big uh, major on our campus is education. A ton of teachers come out of Moravian. Um, all levels, uh, early education, intermediate, secondary ed, and in all of the different subjects. Uh, and then the last one I like to always mention, uh, you know, I talked about, we have two campuses. Our South Campus is dedicated entirely to arts and music. Uh, we have a very, very strong tradition in those programs. So uh, any art and music students, please make sure you, you check us out. Um, we do have all of the, uh, the great things that come with being a small campus, a uh, small student body. So we have that 11 to one student to faculty ratio and the average class size is only 17. And the largest class that a student will probably ever take will be in the low 30s. Uh, we just, we don't have uh, huge lecture halls on our campus that doesn't even exist. Uh, we also have uh, 22 varsity sports and we are a division three uh, athletics program. Um, and uh, over a hundred clubs and organizations on campus. Uh, those uh, range from all sorts of diversity and infin infinity groups, uh, as well as anything uh, you can think of from video games, to uh, equestrian, uh, there, there's, and everything in between. There's all sorts of different opportunities for students on our campus. Uh, we are an Apple Distinguished School. Uh, and what that means uh, is that every incoming uh, freshman or transfer receives a MacBook Pro, iPad, and Apple Pen. And those are the students to keep upon graduation. Uh, and this has become, or been extremely uh, helpful this past year with everything that's happening around the world. Uh, in terms of virtual uh, learning and things, uh, to have everyone on the exact same footing with their technology uh, and to have the same equipment has been huge. Uh, so it's made that transition to the online learning uh, as easy as, as it could be. Uh, we have all sorts of opportunities for students to gain experience both in the classroom uh, and in the community. Uh, we have internships and externships that are offered through our uh, career center. And then our uh, Center for Civic Engagement uh, helps students that are interested in community service and, and other community building type projects. Uh, we do offer uh, undergraduate research opportunities that mimic what graduate level students uh, typically get to do. Uh, but our students are fortunate to be able to do those uh, as undergraduates. And we do offer uh, study abroad programs from uh, full year long to just a, a one month May term. Um, and those are uh, offered in Europe, Asia, and Australia. And then over 98% of our students are employed or in graduate school uh, within 10 months of graduating from Moravian. Uh, just a little bit about our admissions process. Uh, we are on Common App School and we also have our own application on our website. Um, we require an official letter of transcript and one letter of recommendation. And we are test optional unless you're interested in nursing. Uh, if anyone has specific questions about that, if anyone's interested in nursing, please uh, throw that in the chat. And then lastly, I know I'm coming up on my time here, uh, but we have um, all sorts of academic merit scholarships uh, that range from 18 to 28,000 per year. 
and 100% of our accepted students do receive those. There's no special application uh, for them. Once you're accepted, that automatically tri triggers the process for our financial aid office uh, to award you uh, one of those academic merit scholarships. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the presentations. All right, so next we'll hear from Richard Bland College. Hi guys, uh, my name is Jessica Carver. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Richard Bland. Um, I'm super excited to tell you just a little bit about the school today. So Richard Bland um, is kind of unique. We are actually the only two-year selective residential college in the state. Um, so basically what we do is take aspects of both the two-year community college system and the four-year system and kind of blend them together into this unique experience. Uh, we are located in South Prince George, Virginia, just about 30 minutes south of Richmond. Um, we are in a very rural setting, but again, the city is right there. So students kind of have the best of both worlds in that respect. Um, we do have over 35 plus guaranteed transfer agreements with every public university in the state other than VMI, so not limited to just William & Mary. Um, um, as well as a long list of private colleges as well. And we do offer housing and competitive sports on campus. So we were founded in 1960 as a daughter school of William and Mary, along with CNU and ODU, fun fact. Um, we were all three initially daughter schools. We are a much smaller campus than you traditionally find on a two-year um, college campus. We only have about 1,000 students that come to campus every day for class, about 2,500 if you include our duly enrolled students. Um, so that means class sizes are nice and small. They range from 17 to 20 students, meaning you get to know your professors, you get to know your classmates, and they get to know you as well. Um, it really allows us, allows us to provide a little bit more individualized attention and one-on-one -on -one support. About 32% of our students are first-generation college students, about 60% of our students are women, and about 58% of our students identify as a minority population, uh, which is something that we really pride ourselves in because we want for our students to experience as much culture and diversity here in our small environment before transitioning into their larger environment at their uh, next university. So since we are a two-year school, what we offer is associate's degrees. You can see the ones that we offer up here. And our goal is for students to do two years at Richard Bland and complete their associate's degree and then to take advantage of one of our guaranteed transfer agreements and transfer seamlessly into their junior year at their next institution. And you can find the full list of our transfer partners on our website, rbc.edu. Basically how those work is their guaranteed transfer with junior status as long as you meet the outlines, uh, you the requirements outlined in the agreement. Um, and we have a different agreement with each school. So for example, if you're trying to transfer into William & Mary from us, it is a 3.25 GPA a requirement in certain prerequisite courses. Whereas if you're trying to transfer into VCU from us, it's only a 2.5 GPA requirement in certain prerequisite courses. But in order to keep our students on track and make sure that they can take advantage of whatever agreement they want to at their end of the time with us, we have some awesome student supports in place. Um, the most important of which are our learner mentors. Our learner mentors are basically our academic advisors on campus, as well as our transfer and career counselors. Each student that attends Richard Bland is assigned a learner mentor, and this is somebody who is with them throughout their two years at Richard Bland. They do help build semesterly course schedules, but they also have weekly access to attendance and grades so they can very much keep students um, on track to take advantage of whatever agreement they want to. That's part of the individualized attention and one-on-one -on -one support and advising that I kind of mentioned earlier. This is just a little map of campus. As I mentioned, we are in a very rural area. We're technically spread out on 750 acres, although the part that students have to access is not that big. Um, we have this little academic quad area right here. We actually only have two academic buildings on campus, so it's super easy to get back and forth in between classes. Uh, we have Statesman Hall over here, which is home to our athletic facilities, and we do have our two high-rise dormitories, Patriot and Freedom Hall, which hold about 450 students. Um, there's a really nice video of the dormitories online. I do suggest watching it. Um, we're a little bit short on time, so we won't have time to do that today, but our apartments are suite style. So each apartment has four bedrooms and in each bedroom is either one or two students. Um, also in each apartment is a full kitchen, full living room, two bathrooms and a washer and dryer in unit. So they're super nice, um, probably nicer than what I got um, throughout my entire four years at college. So definitely more akin to what you find at upper class and housing at a traditional four year university. Um, as I also mentioned, we do have competitive sports. We are part of the NJCAA Division One, so that's JUCO Division One, um, and we currently offer men's basketball and soccer and women's volleyball, softball, and soccer. 
Um, in addition to our competitive sports, we offer a variety of other clubs, organizations, intramural sports, and leadership opportunities. Again, because it's such a small campus, it's a really, really good place to get involved. Um, that's one thing that I've been suggesting to my students all year is to get involved as early as you can. Uh, because once you graduate with that, with that degree, it's going to be just as much about who you know as what you know when you're looking for a job. Okay, so financial aid and costs. So this chart basically shows the difference in what it would cost to attend Richard Bland for a full year versus what it would cost to attend an average four-year uh, college in Virginia. I always tell students these are sticker prices. The vast majority of our students do not end up paying anywhere close to sticker price because about 75% of our students receive some sort of financial aid or scholarship money. Um, we do have some awesome merit-based scholarships. The Statesman Scholar Program, which you can see on the right, is awarded based on academic level of achievement, so high school GPA, an estimated family contribution, but starting at the 3.0 level, students are eligible to have anywhere between 20 and 80% of all of their out-of-pocket costs covered with us, and there's no separate application for that. Um, Promise Scholars Program is for students specifically interested in transferring to William & Mary, and you can find more information about that on our website. As far as application standards are what we require is, of course, the application. You can find that on our website, rbc.edu. We're also available on the Common App. Um, and then the only thing we need in order to review your application is a copy of your high school transcript. Our preferred GPA for standard admission to the school is a 2.5. And again, our merit-based scholarships do start at the 3.0 mark. Uh, those optional documents down there, again, are optional, test optional, letter recommendation, and essay are optional um, and will only ever help your application, never ever hurt it. So thank you all so much for listening to me speak. I know I'm running short on time here. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via the Q&A or via email. Thanks so much. All right, and next we'll hear from Winthrop University. Hi. Hi, my name is Michelle Bogan and I am with Winthrop University. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, Winthrop. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the question and answer section at the bottom or um, you can contact me um, after the presentation. Uh, Winthrop is located in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Rock Hill is right at the state line of South Carolina, North Carolina. We're about 20 minutes south of Charlotte. Um, there's plenty to do in Rock Hill, um, but not, not everyone has heard of it. Um, we are the fifth largest city in the state of South Carolina. Um, our downtown has just been um, revitalized, um, and so we have a lot of fun things to, to do in our city, but being so close to Charlotte brings a lot of opportunities for students as far as internships and then um, jobs after college. So Winthrop is a four-year public institution. We have approximately 6,000 students, 5,000 undergraduates and 1,000 um, they're working on graduate degrees. We have um, students from many, many countries, many states, um, but this has been a goal of ours for, um, for many years is to continue to grow um, where we have students coming from. So um, diversity is very important to us. Um, we were actually just named um, the most diverse public university in South Carolina. So very excited about that. And then for over 20 years, we have been ranked as one of the top regional colleges. So we have approximately 300 um, full-time faculty members. All of our classes are taught by professors. Um, they're not taught by um, graduate assistants or our teacher aides. Um, our student teacher ratio is 13 to one and average class size is 21. So, um, so small classes, um, not the kind of um, school where you're gonna um, be in huge lecture halls with hundreds of people. Um, again, all of our classes are small. We have over um, 
40 majors, actually 43 majors and over 120 different areas of study. Our top five majors at Winthrop are business, biology, early childhood education, exercise science, and psychology. Do you like to mention we're very big into the, in the arts, uh, theater, dance, music are very big. Um, also, um, we started as an all girls teaching school over a hundred um, years ago. So um, we've diversified over the years. We're not all girls anymore. And we're certainly not only a teaching school, but if you do want to teach, you pretty much can get um, certified to teach in, in any um, subject. So very excited um, about that. We do require our freshmen and sophomores to live on campus. Um, we um, really have found that it is wonderful for students. They get really acclimated, get involved. Um, we have eight residence halls. So we do have um, three different types. We have traditional um, where you'd have a roommate and you share a hall bath with eight to 10 people, suite style. And our suites are like a Jack and Jill and then apartment style. Um, typically our apartment style are reserved for upperclassmen and students in our honors program. So we do have an honors program. Um, and if um, you apply, then you would be invited um, by the honors program if you meet the criteria to, um, to apply. All of our um, residence halls do have um, free laundry, cable, microwave and refrigerators. Um, again, it's just um, a great setup and we really um, feel that our students are happy um, being there for the first two years getting plugged in. So lots to do. We have over 160 clubs and organizations. Within that, we have um, Greek life, we have religious organizations, political organizations, any and every type of club you can probably think of, um, intramural sports, club sports, and we do have 16 division one sports and we are in the Big South Conference. So this is just kind of um, a snapshot of our averages. You can kind of see um, South Carolina students are, um, the GPA is um, higher here because they are typically on a five point scale. Um, but again, um, not our criteria to be accepted, just kind of um, what our averages look like. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to change that so fast. So you can just kind of get an idea. So for us um, to apply, our application is on our website. Uh, we are also accepting the Common App this year for the first time, um, but our application is on our website. Um, very easy application. There's no essay um, required and um, we just require test scores if um, you do not wanna be test optional, but we're allowing students to have the option this year of being test optional. Um, and our application is free until um, November 1st. Um, so if you're interested, um, you can um, find it on our website. Uh, all students are, I'm gonna go quick, I know I'm running out of time, are evaluated for merit-based scholarships, nothing you have to do, you're just automatically evaluated. And um, my contact information is right here. So if you do have any questions at all, please feel free to, um, to contact me and my information is on my website as well. And um, I'll be happy to help. Thank you so much. All right, and the last school before we flip it over to some Q&A time is Auburn University. All right, War Eagle guys, my name is Clayton Ann Halla, and I am the admissions advisor um, for Auburn University for the state of Virginia, DC, and Maryland. Um, so we are a large uh, land, sea, and space grant research institution. We are located in Southeast Alabama. So we're about 30 minutes from the Georgia border, about an hour and a half from Atlanta. Um, that's typically our closer airport for that um, our students fly in and out of. We have shuttles that go to and from our campus this to that airport 14 trips a day. We're in a great location in the southeast, about three hours from the mountains in Tennessee and North Georgia, and about three hours from the Gulf Coast beaches. So a lot of fun day and weekend trips for you guys. Um, we have over 30,000 students in total enrollment. Our undergraduate population is under 25,000. And then our freshman class typically has between about 
4,700 to 4,800 students, give or take. Um, so we're a large university, but we have a small town feel. Um, we have a 20 to one students to faculty ratio. So um, your professors are gonna know you, know what you're struggling with, but you're still at a large SEC school where you can storm a football field with 87,451 people, which is pretty awesome. Um, we're about 60% in-state students, 40% out of state. Um, Virginia is in the top 10 of our feeder states. We do cover all 50 um, and over 100 countries are represented on campus. Um, so geographically, we have students coming from all over. But being in a full collegiate experience, our college town has a lot to get involved with on campus. We have over 550 student ran organizations, everything from leadership opportunities with SGA to Greek life, intramural sports, um, service projects, religious organizations, cultural organizations. They even have something called the pizza club where you travel around and try pizza together. And um, over 19,000 of our students are involved in at least one organization. So our students do love to plug in um, you can see our non-resident tuition and fees listed there at the bottom right. Those are general tuition and fees. And then the bottom left, that is our mascot, Avi the Tiger. He is a nine-time championship winning mascot. So just a fun fact for you guys. Um, now our students, Auburn people, they love Auburn. So we're ranked number one on Princeton's Reviews Colleges with the happiest students. We've been in the top 20, so it's been pretty cool to make number one. Um, so we have 12 colleges and schools, over 150 majors, so a lot for you guys to choose from. We're well known for our STEM degrees, specifically the College of Engineering. Um, we have the number one business school in Alabama, and it's top 55 in the country. Our College of Architecture, Design, and Construction has been in the top 20 for the past 16 years in a row. Um, we're actually ranked in every field of study, so no matter what y'all want to do, you can't go wrong. These are all wonderful programs. Um, now, we do have an exploratory program as well, so you can start undecided at explore more your freshman year um, and take interest quizzes and personality tests and explore our different majors by shadowing classes as well. So if you want more information about that, I can get you their contact information over in um, our exploratory program. So our requirements this year, um, when you apply to Auburn, we need the online application. We have our own institutional application on our website as well as on the Common App. Um, it comes with an application fee if you are eligible for a fee waiver. If you think you are, you can just reach out to me and I'll help you get one. And um, it comes with four short answer responses. Um, the second thing we need is your high school transcript. Now we will accept the unofficial transcript this year so you can just upload your own. Um, and then the third thing we need is one of the following supplemental documents. So we are test flexible this year, meaning you get to pick which one of these four supplemental documents you would like to submit to complete your application filed this year. And um, so now we'll have all of our dates and deadlines listed here. That left bold column that are all of our deadlines. The right column have our decision dates. Um, so we have three rounds of early action and two rounds of regular decision. Early action is non-binding, but if you want any scholarship consideration from Auburn, you have to apply within these rounds. So um, if you haven't applied yet, you do need to apply by December 1st if you would like any scholarship from Auburn. Now we do have a separate scholarship application, um, and that deadline is February 1st. And then May 1 is National College Decision Day, so that's when your enrollment deposits do. That's when you let me know you're going to be hanging out here with us in the fall. And um, so with our scholarships this year, we are also test flexible. All of our merit scholarships and general departmental scholarships will be award um, based on a holistic review. So we'll look at your academic achievement through your transcript supplemental document, and then any other information that you provide for us on the um, awesome scholarship portal. So awesome is our scholarship application. Again, that is due February 1st. So apply by December 1st for admissions, apply for scholarships by February 1st. Now, right now we are um, giving tours on campus. Um, we just opened up the November dates. Um, so if you guys want to come see us, um, you can go to auburn.edu slash visit to sign up there. And we should be hosting um, more visits this spring. Um, and then this is my email, my phone number, my Instagram. So I post updates on there. And of course, if you guys ever have any questions, um, comments, concerns, I'm always here to help. So just let me know. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your day and War Eagle. 
All right, so with that, we have just a couple minutes for Q&A. And while we keep an eye on the Q&A and, and those questions coming in via chat, I want to invite all of our participants, all the panelists, to turn on their cameras. And I will ask a quick question of everybody. So we'll just go around in presentation order. And I would love to hear a fun fact about your campus or a unique tradition, or even if there's something you didn't get to in your presentation, just give us a one, one last 20 second uh, hit about your school. So I'm um, going back to Ohio University. Um, my favorite tradition that we have um, is International Week. Uh, and it's a whole week of international customs, food, and it not only represents, you know, basically the whole world, but um, we have over students and faculty from 100 different countries. Uh, so it, you know, kind of uh, displays our diversity, but also, you know, you get to experience a lot of different cultures and a lot of good food. Um, I'm sort of a, along the same lines there. Uh, one of my favorite traditions or favorite activities that we do at West Virginia University each year is uh, Mountaineer Week. Um, so uh, we kind of uh, focus down um, to um, to study about the uh, Appalachian culture that we're in. And, um, uh, you know, since we have a big out-of-state population, we're about 50-50 on our in-state and out-of-state population. It's nice, I think, to share that with our out-of-state students so they can see really what being a mountaineer and being in the Appalachians is all about. And it's fun. They have a, a nice um, craft fair, lots of, um, you know, local craft, craft, uh, crafts and vendors rather. And then they do um, just some fun student activities. One of the, this, this is going to sound really silly, but the students really love it. We have a uh, monorail system, uh, the PRT, there are five stations across the campus. And one of the things that the students like to do during Mountaineer Week is uh, they take the they take one of the cars and they take all the the windows out and then the doors off and they try to cram as many students into the PRT as they can. It's called the PRT cram, and our record now is ninety seven. <laughs> believe it or not and those cars are little um they are yeah they're little so I'm not sure how that happened but it's <laughs> but it's fun and it's fun to see it each year. Thank you. Um, so uh, my favorite thing, it's not really an event, but it's just a really fun, unique thing about our campus. Uh, our mascot is the Greyhounds. And so because of that, uh, we are a dog friendly campus, um, not for students, unfortunately, uh, but for prof uh, professors, for faculty, for staff. Uh, there are uh, always dogs around campus. A lot of professors will bring them into class and have them just, you know, kind of laying in the corner on their little dog bed and things like that. So uh, if you're a fan of dogs, uh, make sure you check us out because there's always dogs all over the place. All right, so um, Richard Bland, um, as I mentioned in my presentation, we're in a pretty rural setting, technically spread out on 750 acres, and we do have the largest pecan groves in the state, fun fact. Um, we actually do this huge pecan festival every year that's like for the college as well as the outside community um, where they have kind of the big arts and crafts thing. They have large music, different vendors. That's a lot of fun. It usually draws like 8,000 people, which is huge for us considering we only have about 1,000 students that actually come to the campus for class every day. Um, so that's always quite the crowd. Unfortunately, not happening this year due to COVID, but hopefully ramping up for an even bigger event next year. Um, so at Winthrop, um, we started as an all-girls teaching school like 130 years ago in a different part of South Carolina, um, but the original uh, one-room schoolhouse was brought to our current campus um, brick by brick, and so it is on our campus. Um, it's called the Little Chapel, and um, I just think it's just so charming, and we have a lot, um, a lot of history has been restored there, and we'll have shows where you'll bring out the trunks that the um, that the women brought to school and you can see all of their um, the things that they would bring when it first started. So anyway, it's just tradition. My favorite tradition is probably um, 
the rolling of tumors corner after an Auburn victory. So whether it's football, basketball, baseball, equestrian meets gymnastics, if Auburn wins, we go down to the corner of where downtown Auburn meets um, our campus and we take toilet paper and we roll everything. We roll the trees, the grounds, the, the every street signs. I mean, if you can see it, we will roll it. And so fun fact, we're the only county in the country with a payroll for cleaning up toilet paper, which is interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, we're going to wrap things up for this six by six. I want to thank you, say thank you to all of our presenters and all of the students who joined us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. And again, this is just one of many different sessions being hosted. We have another one starting in 15 minutes. So be sure to sign up for those additional sessions at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at that same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. So again, thank you to all the presenters. And I'm sure I'll see a few of the participants at the next session, which starts in 15 minutes. And for the rest of you, have a great day.